It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing three legends in dentistry. We got David Charnowitz, who you've all heard of DC Dental. The DC stands for the man David Charnowitz. We got Jay Glazer. Wave your hand, Jay. There he goes. And Howie Friedman. How are you doing, Howie? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing today? Well, have you ever noticed that the smartest people in dentistry are always named Howie? I noticed that right away. I mean, it's <laughs> the first it, thing I noticed. <laughs> uh, my mom is the only one that calls me Howie, but every, I, I tell everybody, when people say, can I call you Howie? I say, yeah, that's what my mom calls me. But I wanted to get you on the show because um, I called you. You didn't call me. This isn't a commercial. They, they, I don't. Nobody's ever paid a dollar um, to come on this show because it would only be worth 10 cents. And so why would they pay 10 times uh, the cost? Uh, but, but um, when you started this innovative deal, crazy dental prices, and um, I have to tell you the truth on dental town and things like that. Whenever they hear of somebody starting a buying club or this or that, they don't know if it's a gimmick, if it's the real deal, how, how do my homies know if a dental supply uh, buying club is lower priced than the big dogs like Shine, Patterson, Benko, Burkhart. Is that a? Well, I think, I think it's imp it's important to understand. Uh, you know, buying clubs is a generic name, so you have to look at who's the company behind it and what's the mission statement and the purpose. Um, and I think, uh, you know, so there are some buying clubs out there that um, you know aren't necessarily providing any cost savings. Um, and I can speak to you about Crazy Dental. And what's interesting is we're a buying club that is segmented as part of a dental supply company. So it's clearly, it's Crazy Dental Prices, the buying club. It's a DC dental company. And what that means is that we recognize in the individuality of dentists, that each dentist kind of has their own way that they would like to conduct purchasing of supplies um, based on what works well and what's most efficient for within their practice. So we originally started as DC Dental, um, a full service company, and we still are. We have sales reps, relationships, and the whole nine yards. But what we recognized was that there's a whole segment of dentists that don't necessarily have time for uh, engagement with their sales rep. And it becomes almost like a contentious sort of a relationship. So the, uh, the genesis for Crazy Dental in its, in its current iteration is basically – Think of the dentist that wants to save money on supplies, wants to pay a fair price, doesn't have time to shop around for the cheapest price every single time they're going to order. Um, so what they basically do is they register as part of Crazy Dental, and it's a free membership. And what you get is access to what we call the vendor price comparison. And it essentially mimics a marketplace, yet if you go on to a marketplace, let's say like Net32, you don't know if the products are authorized. They can be gray market. You're not getting manufacturer promotion. So here you get the best of both worlds. You get negotiated pricing and it creates a member's club. And what that means is that everybody's part of this uh, club and we back by 110% price guarantee. So we're going to match the lowest authorized advertised price. You don't have to, we have your back. You never have to look out for, am I, am I getting a lower price on one invoice and a higher price on another invoice? The marketplace itself defines what the price is going to be, and it's backed up by 110% price guarantee. So I can't speak to other buying clubs, but I can tell you that if you're a member of Crazy Dental and you're interested in almost like a set it and forget it, I want to order my supplies, I want to have great customer service, I want it to be easy, and I want to know that I'm paying a, a low price for all of my supplies, and the, the, the club itself keeps... It, the club and the membership keeps us as a company honest to ensure that we're providing the lowest price. Well, you know, my homies are kind of, um, they're, they're kind of skittish on prices. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure you guys had to remember, but it was just um, last year, Shine Patterson and Benko were sued for price fixing. And um, it was from the Federal Trade Commission Act. Um, did you, what, 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 what did you think when that went down? I, and I'm sure this is a small industry. I'm sure they're all your friends. Um, and, and I love them too. I, I love, I, I've had it all, um, you know, m most of them on the show, but wh what did you think of that? And look, I, I think, I think the answer is, is that an industry that has so few that the industry, 90, 85% of the industry, the supplies portion is controlled by three companies, whether there's price fixing or what we'll call the effects of what price fixing would have looked like. Um, the reality is that when you, when you have less competition, you're going to have less transparency when it comes to price. Um, 
I can't sit there and, you know, like you said, it's a small industry and I don't know the players personally. I'm not intimately involved to tell you, well, they were or they weren't price fixing. What I can tell you is there is need for transparency and Crazy Dental is a transparent platform. You can see exactly what you're going to pay and why. You're going to show you Safco's price. We're going to show you Darby's price. We're going to show you DHPA's price. And I think that um, – this definitely helps to remedy if there was price fixing. This is a great solution that if dentists can get behind. Well, well let, me, let me tell you another another reason in this case. Like, okay, so let, let's say you buy from Henry Schein. I mean, Henry Schein even started a buying club, like a Thrive program. You're like, well, I mean, I don't go into Walmart, and Walmart says, hey, you want to join Sam and Helen's uh, buying club? And Walmart's like, dude, dude, I thought I already shop at Walmart. I mean, um, so, it, you know, it's kind of weird. Like, like, why would Henry Schein start a Thrive program. You would think if I'm buying from Henry Schein, I'm, aren't I already in the program? <laughs> right. So I guess you could ask the same question when it comes to DC Dental. Why do we have a standard program and a buying club? And I think the answer is it depends on how you would like to engage. We want as a company, we want to make sure that whatever is most efficient for you, the process that you and your practice would like to go through to purchase supplies and pay a low price for them you'll get them. If you engage with our sales reps, quite honestly, you can get that as well. They can, they're can they skilled on negotiating and educating on how to get deals and prices. If you're interested in less, in less um, communication with your sales rep and you don't want to be bothered, you don't want to have a sales rep, then signing up for something like the crazy dental pricing. But quite honestly, my advice is if you're, if you're a dentist and you don't want the engagement and you're buying from somebody who's set up for engagement, you're probably going to be overpaying. Okay. But my young kids, um, they, you know, a quarter of my listeners are still in dental school and the other three quarters under 30. So they're, they're not following your lingo, um, engaged dentists. What, what, what do you mean by that? So uh, the, tra- <laughs> the traditional, so the traditional, uh, process for purchasing supplies would be you would call up your local or a supplier that you know of and they would send a sales rep out to your office and they would get you set up um, depending on where you are if you purchase a practice or if you needed to uh, build a new practice or if you were just for what, wherever you were, you wanted to purchase supplies. So they would set you up with a sales rep and that sales rep would come in and talk to you about the, their entire product offering and what products that, what products there are that you need. Um, that would be the traditional model. I think when we talk about younger generation, um, the younger generation is interested in less quote engagement. I want to go online. I want to search for the supplies I need, or I want to go to the website that I'm familiar with the company that I want to do business with. I want an easy, transparent place where I can see that I'm paying low pricing and that there's great customer service. Well, speaking of online, um, all these young millennials, they, they all got um, the, the Amazon uh, app on their deal. In the last three years in a row that I went to Greater New York, Amazon had a booth there. So um, what do you think of the Amazon thread? I mean, does this keep you up at night? <laughs> Well, no, I, I think I think Amazon is um, is a great, and I use Amazon. I, I probably get ten packages a day at my house from Amazon. Amazon is the best place to buy something. When you've identified, hey, I need, um, you know, I need an iPhone case, and I know exactly which case I want. I go onto Amazon, and I know I'm going to get it at the lowest price there. Um, when you're talking about the process of purchasing supplies for your office, the average office uses 120 different supplies. You know, I, I challenge you, Howard. Go, go on to Amazon now. Try to buy AA batteries. Try oh, to I know. And, uh, they, on they... and off the site in five seconds. It's not set up for easy. And in a practice, when you're ordering 30 or 40 products at a time, it needs to be easy. So right now, I'm, we're not concerned about Amazon. I think what, what we bring at Crazy Dental mimics the Amazon, what Amazon should be, the Amazon experience. So we don't have the Amazon name. So, so you said think, the average dental office uses 120 different items? Correct. Wow. And, and what I also noticed about Amazon is once they know you're not looking at a screen, like you're on Echo, um, you're, you're, not, you're not buying the lowest price. And, um, Correct. And they, you ask for those uh, batteries, and they're going to kick you to some low-cost deal. Um, but, but anyway, so, so you're not worried about Jeff Bezos? You, you, um, that, that's not... Well. That does. I mean, what I, what, what keeps you? I, yeah, I mean, I, I I'm I'm counting on the fact that we understand, and it's not. This is not exclusive to Crazy Dental. I think the dental suppliers and clubs that that are customized to service 
the dental community understand the dental platform and the way dental uh, offices operate. Um, it's our opinion that Amazon and its current platform just doesn't lend itself to the efficiency for success within the dental practice. Could it change? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to count on Jeff Bezos being able to disrupt anything he wants, but also the hubris of Amazon won't allow them to change their platform for a small niche market like the dental market. Well, the, the, I, the want reason, bring, I want to build up, bring up one more thing on Amazon. Howie, you Amazon, can't interrupt it, Howie. <laughs> <laughs> we're, in a new, we're in a new metaphysical world now, but what were you going to say? Go. <laughs> no, go. Oh, well, Amazon is also built specifically for a competitive market that, that, in, that not only allows for but encourages gray market and, and the like uh, to drive down pricing and to almost confuse the buyer, but to, to, to make price the only thing that matters as opposed to quality. And uh, that's something also that's not going to be a great fit for a lot of the dentists that are out there that want to buy products from authorized dealers and, and, and products that the manufacturer is going to stand behind. Okay. So l l let's talk about that a little bit. Um, Cause again, I, I, a quarter of my viewers are in dental kindergarten. And if there's any viewers, my age listing, uh, they're probably almost drunk and passed out right now. But um, so there's four kinds. So when we look at um, price discrimination, um, we have one, two, and three price discrimination. Number one is illegal. It is um, you can't charge Bill Gates, a hundred dollars for a can of Coke and then me a dollar. Um, Supreme court says that's not fair, uh, that that's illegal. Number two is, um, volume discounts. Um, you know, if, if Walmart buys one Barbie doll, I mean, if I buy one Barbie doll, uh, it's going to cost 10 bucks, but if Walmart buys a thousand, they get a lower price. The Supreme court says, but you have to show the volume discounts. Uh, so they, they know you have to explain why the volume, if you get sued, you have to explain why the volume resulted in lower costs. Number three, um, is what he's talking about. Grandma is geographical price discrimination. Our pharmaceutical <clears throat> companies, uh, sell Howie, his Viagra at $10 a pill in the United States. Uh, but my uh, Chinese dentist friends buy it for 50 cents in Hong Kong. And that is How illegal. He's on his way. That is illegal, but that's <laughs> all, but that's what everybody does. So when I, I've lectured in 50 countries and I'll see, I'll see a bottle of bonding agent that's $300 in the United States and it's $50 in New Delhi and Rio. So then they pass laws that say you can't re-import um, stuff sold to uh, India and China and Brazil and reported in there. So now they try to make you feel bad that it's great market. I mean, I is it? I mean, well, what, David, Howard, let me, let me what, put it to you this way: yeah. If you were to go buy a 3M product bonding agent in India from an authorized 3M, uh, you know, I think that it would be totally fine. I think the issue comes that it's a supply chain integrity issue, so you don't know who purchased it from India or if it in fact came from India. And I'm not saying that gray market equals counterfeit. I'm saying if there is counterfeit in the marketplace, it would come through a non authorized channel. So when you're talking about products of patient safety, I think it's something where you want to be careful um, if you're a practitioner, but is it is, how much, uh, so what's the technical term? Is it called gray market or what, what what's the term? <sighs> what, what's the de facto word? That everything uh, else. Uh, the, yeah, all of them. Gray market, power, parallel market, price arbitrage. Yeah. They're all terms. Hey, but I'll tell you this. I know, um, you know, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I think every third dentist has the last name Patel. And they'll they'll go, they'll take two weeks vacation, go home with two suitcases, and buy a year's dental supplies for $1,000 that, you know, and, and I have Brazilian <laughs> dentists that do that in Rio de Janeiro, San Paulo. Um, how much, um, um, how, how big of a uh, savings is that buying uh, on going on vacation to India, Hong Kong, or Brazil to get uh, lower supplies? Uh, and I'll tell you this: when I was lecturing in Germany, there was a there were dentists there going to um, Serona. But this is before the X-ray marriage. And they were buying the uh, the CAD cam there for sixty thousand, and then shipping it back to the United States because Patterson charged a forty percent import fee on the uh, the Cirac machine. So it, is this a common deal, or um, is gray market a big deal in the United States, or are we talking fringe? Well, I think I think uh, when you look online, so if you are, and I speak to the let's say the 
the guys that are still in school, the younger generation who maybe doesn't understand who's brought up on Google. You're going to go online. You're going to search for a product. You're going to look for their product. Most of the buy boxes on the pop, a popular product, Google Shopping, what's going to come up are not going to be authorized. If you see a price that looks significantly lower, it's not going to be an authorized product. Um, meaning it's going to be coming through a parallel market, which means it could, and I highlight the word could, I'm not saying it does, it could present a patient safety issue. I think that, you know, what we're trying to focus on in the market, and, and I think there's 150,000 dentists in the country or so, um, you know, there might be a couple, two, five, that go overseas to buy the Sarek machine and another five or 25 that go to India. The reality is that a successful dental practitioner will understand that a supplies is a component of his practice, but it is not the be all and end all. And if there is a simple, easy, transparent platform to purchase product where you know you're saving money, you don't have to look over your shoulder and you honestly set it and forget it. You don't have to think about it. You can focus on doubling the revenue in your practice. I mean, it takes what, 12 minutes to do a filling? You know, I mean, the, whatever you're saving in supplies on a month by buying a product, y you can make up by doing two more, you know, fillings, another crown and bridge. So I think it's, right. it's more important as a dentist to focus in your practice and so, know that you're working with the right partner. So what year did you start DC Dental? Uh, 2002. So I got, can I, I got to tell you my dental town story real quick. Cause um, it's the same parallel. So I started dental town in, in um, uh, St. Patrick's day, 99. And, um, and you started in 2002. So what was I just three years ahead of you? And back then the five C's of the internet were commerce, commercials, connectivity, content. Um, what was the other one? And uh, community. And everybody uh, was saying it was all going to be like Amazon in 94 to two. It was all going to be selling stuff. And I thought to myself, well, my number one cost is my, um, here's my, I charge a thousand dollars for a crown, but all my uh, insurance companies uh, downgrade that to 600. So my number one cost is 42%. And that's the, the adjusted fee production from the, my cost <laughs> to the PPO fee. So my number right. one cost was, is uh, for, for the industry is a 42% reduction in fee for the PPO. Number two is labor, which uh, should be, you know, 25% uh, max, including everything. Number three is lab, uh, you know, eight to 9%. And if you're worried about supplies, I mean, what, do you, what are you going to do next? Put a lockbox over the thermostat? I mean, after you've, <laughs> after you've taken the PPO fee and made payroll and paid your lab bill, who gives a shit what the electric bill was or how much you paid on gauze? Yeah, I, I just think it's a lot hard. It's a lot harder to uh, downsize a staff, unnecessary staff member, than it is to squeeze your supplier for some additional discounts. But look, I think in any efficient business, and I, you know, we we see this in our business. Businesses are universal. You want to be efficient, so it means you don't want to squeeze every last penny and make that number four the number one priority. But make number four the number four priority from a cost savings, and there are easy, simple ways to do that. So, David, um, you're the DC, David Charnowitz. Um, tell us about your journey. How did you end up in dental supplies? I mean, um, what what went wrong in your life where you ended up in dental supplies? Wow, it was really an accident. Um, really, it really, I just kind of fell into it. Uh, I was in school, was looking to make a few extra bucks, and I had a buddy that was working for a dental supplier in Canada, and he said, hey, there's this thing. Why don't I uh, – I'll, I'll arrange for you to buy a few products, and you'll sell them. And that's pretty much how I started. Huh, now, was that the, the guy – you worked for the guy, the one that just passed away? Of the big uh, dental supply? Who? No. No, no. Uh, what was Sorry. it? Sinclair? Sinclair? The founder? Oh, of really? I wasn't, I wasn't aware. Yeah. Le legend up there. Um, sure. But uh, so, um, so you're not worried about <laughs> – um, Amazon. Um, so you started this crazy dental prices. Um, what do the young kids, um, you know, they, they, they come out of school, they work for the big DSOs, they work for Heartland, all those guys for a while. And now they're going to start their own dental office. Um, what, what should they be thinking about when they're picking a supplier? Um, so, uh, you know, I think, I think number one, is you've got to decide is it do you want do you have the time to sit down and negotiate pricing or do you want to find a solution that kind of does it for you and if you enjoy the process of 
the, the back and forth of negotiating pricing. None and, of them do. You know, I, there, there, there's oh, three people that okay. enjoy that, and they <laughs> all are in some market in, Mo, in uh, Morocco. I mean, it's a right. culture so, thing. Americans don't like to do that. They love it in right. Mexico City, and they love it in Morocco, but they don't like it in the United States. It's just a cultural thing. Right. So unfortunately for the younger generation, I know the easiest thing is to, like I said, go on Google, search for the supplies I need and buy them. Um, the, the industry right now is set up to work through a supply company. So you're going to want to do that. You don't want to avoid that. And the reason you don't want to avoid that is you want to make sure you're getting manufacturer promotions. You want to make sure you're pa patient safety authorized products. And um, you want to make sure that you're dealing with a reputable company. So what I would suggest is, yes, I, I would find a company or a, a club, a buying club, Crazy Dental is a great option out there where it's really easy. You're not going to get sold. Uh, there's an easy website. We'll get you set up. The, the process is transparent. Like I said, it's self-correcting. So if somebody comes out with a lower price that's an authorized dealer, Crazy Dental will automatically match that price. So it is an easy, transparent marketplace. If you want easy, it's not as easy as going on Google looking for the items, but think about it this way. You go on Google, Every single time, you have to go search for the item that you want. On Crazy Dental, we have the products arranged in a very easy-to-use format for reorder. So it's really – it's there's a little bit of upfront, you know, a half hour, 45 minutes maybe of onboarding. But after that, it's really set it and forget it. So, so let, me, let me tell you, I, I started the story and I forgot. It was the five C's of the Internet. And it was uh, community, uh, content, uh, commercials – uh, connectivity. Um, what was the other one? Community content. Community, 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 community. content, commercials, community content, commercials, connectivity. Um, what was the fifth C? Yeah, credibility. No. Um, yeah. Content, commercials, connectivity. What was the fifth C? Clarity. Creativity. No. Crazy. Crazy. As in there crazy dental. <laughs> oh, commerce. Commerce. <laughs> I knew my brain. So so everybody started out in commerce. And back then, <laughs> and it was 94. Dive. From 94, um, all these big people did, um, they did venture capital. There was dental exchange. I mean, we all started at the same time as about 20 of us, and I'm the only one that survived because they all went after commerce supplies, and I went after community. And when they told me, they said, well, Dental Town, are you going to sell supplies? And I'm like, dude, I need my person to come in every week. I mean, it's, it's the same reason I'm starting Dental Town is to connect to the community. That guy's my only connection to the outside world. And I don't care what he knows about endophiles, but he knows if I say, well, hey, what's the endodontist up the street using? Um, you know, what, what is, and, and that was my connection. And it's like the same reason I wanted to start a community was why I was not going to um, cut off my supply guy. I mean, I still think that the number one value in life is not what you know, but what you know and who you know. And if you're not out there networking and trying to meet uh, people going the same direction as you, uh, you're not going to make it. And, and if you think winning, like, like I'll, I'll give you another example, dental implants. Every single person I know on earth that places one implant a week, and that, that's a critical mass. If, if you're not doing it something once a week, you're not good at it, you're not profitable at it. You wouldn't want to get a vasectomy by some guy who does it every other month. You'd want the guy that can now do it. Now you tell me. <laughs> and so, so <laughs> everybody I know, you know, I'll say, well, what brand do you use? Hell, they know the name of their rep. And then I have friends here that have changed implant companies three times because their rep has gone from one implant company to another implant company to they're following the rep. So for me, it's all about community. Um, so, um, so I didn't start dental supplies in 99 and I'm not starting them in 2019. I mean, that that's 20 years. Um, relationships is more important uh, than saving a nickel on an implant or, or any of that stuff. That's not really a question, I guess. I'm just, oh, but the, the and the next question was that, that was the internet, and how we um, the, the the internet was um, the the first revolution I lived through, and now you're um, doing AI, which is the second biggest revolution. I mean, right now the the internet when Amazon started in '94, it was the internet revolution, and I caught that way with Dental Town, but now it's the 
digital transformation with four things, cloud computing, big data, the internet of things and AI. So Howie, that's your department. Why, how are you using AI? Well, when we, uh, we set out to try to build a distribution facility that can meet the demands of our growing business, we needed to do it in a way in an Amazonian style way that allowed us to distribute our products accurately and on time so that, you know, that could become one of our differentiators from a lot of the competitors that are out there. Um, so we, you know, and there's a hundred thousand products in the ether dental products that are out there. And we have to make sure that we're keeping the right products in stock that we can pick pack and ship those products within an hour or two of you placing the order. So it can make, the uh, the truck at the end of the night and be in your office the next in the next day or two depending on how far away you are from our facility. So we uh, we use a lot of uh, complex algorithms to to make all that happen. Okay, we well, have well the algorithms are, are. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, you don't have that. Are, are you are you the, uh, using like Amazon's? There, there's four big cloud. Companies. There's Amazon Web Services, uh, there's Microsoft Azure, there's uh, IBM Watson, there's Google Cloud. Or are you using algorithms from where you're we hosting are the cloud? We on Oracle database. Our, our, our primary database that we're using to house our, uh, our information is on an Oracle database. But uh, the, the complexity comes in how we've organized the data. You know, and the, and the, the, the number of item characteristics that we maintain for every SKU in our, in, in, in our, in our database. So that allows us to, to catalog it properly and list it on our website to making sure that we can store properly and, 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 and the, that we can order it and reorder data. properly. And the, and the pricing, pricing data, data. To, and the pricing data to make sure that we're providing a transparent and open, you know, that information to the consumers to be able to see you know, most, what they're paying. Most uh, retailers have to keep one price per item. We have to keep not only our price, but we've got to maintain the prices of all the competitors that are out there. And if uh, anybody who's listening to this logs into crazydentalprices.com and, uh, and, 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 and starts to browse through the, uh, the website, you'll see that we're listing the price for so, everybody. So, so that's one, sort of one, data more, one more question. Are you, is, uh, yeah. are you, um, is this being, do you store, do you do all this on Larry Ellison's, um, Oracle cloud in California, or do you have your own servers and you use his software in your building? We don't have our own servers. It's, no, it's in, it, it's, it's, they're hosting, they're hosting the data and secure servers, uh, that we're not necessarily ourselves even privy to the exact locations of, uh, the server data. It's, it's certified through. Um, I don't recall the exact certification as the authority, but, but it's certified the same, same databases in the same server farms that would be housing the data that Amazon itself would be using, or maybe not Amazon cause they have their own, but that Oracle would be using. So, uh, and we're, and we're leveraging the cloud so that, and, and not only that, but our, our, not only our website, but all our data is accessible to all our employees, even though we have offices, you know, throughout the country. Actually, so, throughout the so, world. So that's, you know, I got my MBA from Arizona St- uh, State University. And so you're either going to be always spending money upgrading your servers and servers, and that's a CapEx expense. Or you're going to say, screw all that. Why am I going to, I'm not, that's not my core competency. And you make it a cap op expense uh, where you just store it somewhere else and um, and just pay a monthly fee like you do with your utility bills. You're not going to build uh, a gas-fired so, plant. Everything that we're talking about was designed to cut costs, not to raise costs. Uh, we cut costs. That's actually one of the questions we get a lot is how, how are we able to match the lowest price? And the reason is because leveraging data uh, and technology allows you to deliver a product to the customer at a very, very competitive so, price. So then my next question, since you're the, the tech guy, the AI guy, um, why does 150,000 dental offices in America and 30,000 dental special offices all have their own servers and trying to put their firewalls and trying to have the internet connection? And do you think we're almost at a tipping point where these dentists are going to say, forget that, and they're going to move it all to the cloud? Or is that- I mean, you take a po- take a poll of your community and you said 150,000 offices. I think you'd be surprised at how many of them already don't have servers in their in their in their facility. I bet you a lot of them. A lot of the practice management software that's out there is cloud-based. 
uh, and that enables them to, to connect all their operatories together through the cloud, and there's no centralized server within the actual practice. So do you have it's so, pretty commonplace? So it's it's it you're you're seeing more of it, or you think it's common? Like like what percent are you seeing? Uh, I'm we're not in the practice management right. software space, but I, I would I would guess at least a quarter at this point. No way. So you think they think I'm way off? Oh well, well, you know the 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 term I hate the most is the United States of America. I mean, how do you compare San Francisco to Anchorage? I grew up in Kansas. You know, when I was twenty four. The first time I um, went to Manhattan, and I can still remember looking out the window. Then it dawned on me that 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 huge gray thing was it was looked like an inverted Grand Canyon. And I mean, I missed a breath. So, I mean, you can't compare Louisiana to Manhattan. I mean, so I don't know, but in your neck of the woods, I mean, you guys are up there, Baltimore, Maryland. That's a, that's a pretty big stretch from um, Baltimore to Boston is about 50 million Americans. Um, in that stretch, are you starting to see a quarter of the people go to cloud? We're seeing a lot of, a lot of managed IT, I think, and practices. Managed, outsourced IT, sure. So, but, and any, um, any, um, recommendations on, um, the cloud uh, who, who's there, if, if she wanted to go cloud and she wanted to practice management information in this, in the cloud, do, do, is there one you like more than the others? David, you could probably answer this better than me. Well, I mean, you know, we work with a company and they're called Intelcom. Uh, they're local, they do managed IT and they, they play in the dental space. Um, you know, I, so we try to stay away from the uh, IT. There's so many factors when you talk about digital in each office because you've got to look at, you know, what, what type of equipment, technology equipment, x-ray equipment, file storage, secure file storage. So it's really just not our core competency. Right. Right. But, but I, you know, but I have to ask you because everybody else has got channel conflict. Like if I, <laughs> no one wants to offend anybody. So what I do is I try to offend everybody. And if I, if there's... If somehow I didn't offend you, please see, send me an email, Howard at dentaltown.com. And I want to tell you, share a story about your mother and I'll email it back to you. Um, so, um, so what, what else do you think these young kids uh, don't know about the dental supply? I know another thing they're thinking is, well, don't, what, what about dental equipment? Has that been discombobulated? I mean, is, is, is Pelton and Crane going to sell through a different channel than uh, Septicane? What well, yeah. is, is your, how's your mix of equipment and supplies? Is it same people, different channels? What? So, I mean, we generally provide equipment um, more regionally based around Baltimore, Maryland. And um, we have service technicians. Uh, the equipment business is, is far more complex, far more political. Um, so we wouldn't, you know, we'd be restricted from carrying certain lines. Um, in general, we really look at, you know, equipment and, and with the, ever-changing, uh, you know, impact of technology on the equipment sector. Because when you generally are going to upgrade equipment, it's not just going to be equipment. You're going to be, it's going to be part of some larger picture of an upgrade of an office. And I think you got to consider digital. Um, you know, we can, we, we try to consult and have conversations with our, our customers as far as what digital options are out there. But quite honestly, it's, you know, that's something that we're not very focused on right now. We don't, we don't see an edge to how we can provide additional value. So again, we leave that outside of our core competency. Dental equipment. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. So you leave dental equipment completely out. You're just doing dental supplies. Uh, primarily. We, like I said, regionally in the Baltimore, Maryland, you know, probably 75 or hundred surrounding areas. We do it as part as our loyal customers when they're looking for, uh, you know, when they don't want to go anywhere else. Um, but you know, we don't yet have the reach throughout the country. So it's not something that we would talk about as a core competency of ours. Okay. So that, that's another question. We, we have li about half our listeners aren't even in the United States. Um, and then we got some of these, uh, crazy weirdos called Canada. Um, do you, is it, are you an American play or do you cross? Yeah, you gotta be careful. David's wife is from uh, Toronto. You got to be careful. That's right. My wife is Canadian. Oh my God. Um, my children are now half Canadian. How many children do you have? Four. God, how he has four. I have four. We where was AI when we were starting a family to say, dude, <laughs> dude, do not have four. Only have two. How many do you have, Jay? Uh, eight. <laughs> no, you don't. Do, do. You have eight kids? 
Oh, I feel so much better. I always feel so so (laughs) insane having four. And now I'm just going to think, well, at least I'm not Jay. He has eight. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, if artificial intelligence existed, no one would have a child, but, um, but so is, um, so do you sell, what if someone's listening right now in Toronto? So right now we don't, we don't really provide distribution to Canada. Um, it's a market we've taken a look at. It's something that's on our radar for the future. Um, it just with, you know, if, if there was a Canadian doctor that wanted to purchase and wants to take advantage, the pricing is, is excellent within Canada. We can sell. But, you know, from a customs standpoint, the doctor would have to handle their own customs clearance. We'd have to ship it from the U.S. Okay, David, I got to ask you a question I can only ask you because I can't ask Jay. But why Why do they call Jay Crazy Jay? Um, because he has eight kids. <laughs> he has eight kids. Is that, is that, is that the answer? Uh, yeah, he, he an answer. Go, four kids ago, they just called him Jay. <laughs> Did you really? What, what are the ages of the kids? From what to what? 17 down to one. So, yeah, don't ask me their birthdays, but I get 17 down to one. You know, that was, that's so cool. I I, I, had, I grew up with five sisters and um, my mom and dad, um, they had a uh, mistake when I was a senior in high school and that was my little brother, Paul. And that mistake, which every doctor said, no, you're 40 years old to my mom. You cannot have this child. You got you to gotta go to the doctor and, and stop this. And my mom said, well, I can't do that. And, um, and everybody was so worried about it. And Paul's like the complete gift of the family. It was like, instead of getting a dog or a cat, we got Paul. And, uh, it was just, uh, it was just amazing. Um, so, um, did you change diapers? Oh, absolutely. And then I had four boys. Yeah. I uh, love the diaper thing. So, um, I, I want to go back to this, um, uh, dental, um, what was the, uh, Oh, I want to go back to one story about, um, back to supplies, just to let you know, you, you live up in Baltimore, uh, which is uh, frozen half the time of the year. When I get some of my supply, I'm in Phoenix. Today's today it's 115 degrees. You know what it is in the back of a UPS truck? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, I, I I remember when I first opened up in '87, and I just it would uh, have impression material. It wouldn't set. It was the A and the B. It wouldn't set going through the cartridge. And I call it Patterson. Who's in Minnesota. You know, it's probably, you know, they were probably in an ice storm and they didn't know what was going on. But when I talked to my other desert rats down here, they're like, yeah, it doesn't set. So, um, does the internet of things, does AI, does it help you understand, dude, you can't put a bottle of this bonding material on the back of a UPS truck in Phoenix. Well, I think a lot of uh, a, a lot of things have sped up, so it doesn't spend as much time in the back of a truck. Uh, but we have seen, we do see. What I do see uh, is that some products are more likely, you know, the gallon bottles of whatever are more likely to crack. Let's say so, we'll get somebody, a customer, to complain that you know their gallon uh, leaked all over, and it was, you know, when they when it arrived. Um, which is why we, we ship them separately. But for the most part, the products aren't sitting on the truck that long where we found it to be an issue. So it's not an issue? Uh, go ahead. Mm-hmm, go ahead. Well, I, I think some of our manufacturers also don't ship us product if it's if it's large pallets because in that situation, it could sit on a pallet, you know, on, on the back of an 18-wheeler from California all the way to Baltimore and going through, you know, some nasty weather. So they'll hold shipments for like a month or so, you know, during the, the coldest weather. But for the most part, it's not much of an issue. It's not that cold in Baltimore. Um, so um, if you it's were on Minnesota. Shark Tank, the, the smartest guy on Shark Tank is absolutely Mr. Wonderful. Um, I, you notice that in every crowd. The bold guy is, oh, it's either the bold guy <laughs> or the guy named Howie. And Mr. Wonderful, if he was talking to you three gentlemen right now, um, he would say, um, who's your competition? Um, the CDA subsidiary just started, the California Dental Association just started the Dentist Service Company, TDSC. They purchased Arnold Dental Supply. Um, so what, what, what are your thinking of now the uh, nonprofit dental associations getting into the supply business? And, and what's your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think, <laughs> it's it's about ease of use and transparency and you know who it's owned by shouldn't be as important as important as what the service is that they're delivering so you know the only thing i can tell you is i can't speak to tdsc and and how their pricing compares um what i can tell you is that we focus on making sure you don't have to watch your back we're never going to rip you off we have a we have a 
a, a, a self-transparent, self, um, really self-governing uh, uh, pricing scheme with Crazy Dental. And I, I think the answer is it doesn't really matter who owns the company. It's how easy is it to use? Will it help you run your practice more efficiently and more profitably? Okay. Uh, what, what else do you think they should know? Um, what, uh, again, to the kids, that they come out there, um, they open up their own office, um, they, um, we're, we're, what, what, what do you think? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would, I would say like this to the kids and, and I spoke recently in university of Maryland dental school. I was brought in uh, to buy them lunch, which the kids love to do. <laughs> um, and, uh, so, you know, I think there's a lot of misconception about the dental dealer and, you know, you could read a lot of stuff about the FTC. And I think it's important to understand that a dealer is a resource if you're a dentist, if you're a practice, your dealer is a resource. And if you're not getting value out of your resources, whether it's a dental dealer, your computers, whoever it is, anybody that you're paying money to, they're not necessarily fixing the cost of the product, but they are providing you a service. And if you don't feel like you're getting value, challenge them or find somebody else. Okay, so, I, want, uh, I, want to, I want to reverse engineer this. You started the program saying that the, um, where did I put that? That the, uh, the dentist use, uh, the average dentist uses about 120 different uh, dental um, items. Um, where's, l l let's start um, with the biggest, you know, the, the top three. I mean, is it gloves? Is it impression material? Where, where, where's the biggest I thing? I mean, it, it, you'd have to go with anesthetics would be a huge one. Um, disposables, infection control, anesthetics, wait, impression wait, material. Wait, 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 you're going too fast. So um, you say anesthetics first, then what was second? Yeah, I mean, only anesthetics is only first because, I mean, it's in every single office. Um, I would go with composites and bonding. Bonding, okay. So composite, so anesthetics, composites, and bonding. Um, what Impression would be next? Material. Impression material. Okay. Okay. C cement. Okay. Infection control. Okay. And and disposables. See, uh, kind of yeah. So um, so then let's. I, I'm I'm gonna go through those because like um um, disposable. Um, we'll we'll uh, hey, wait wait hey, one second. I, um, we'll go with anesthetics. So um, uh, that's too boring. Composite and bonding. I I want to I want to say it the other way. I, I want to go to what's stressful from uh, my friends that have dental offices, what's stressful when I talk to dental assistants who's worked, say, say they work for five different dentists for five years each, um, that when you start getting into group practices, the, the poor dental assistant can't remember that, oh, David wants these seven burrs and Jay wants these nine burrs and how he's got 12 burrs and, and they're just like, uh, and, the, and then the supply reps say to me things like, uh, well, God, if David wants latex gloves and Jay's got a latex allergy. So, um, you know, when you're buying, when you got three prima donnas that all need special stuff, I mean, you're, you're probably, uh -huh. no one's going to save them money, are they? So, so actually, first of all, yes. And second of all, it's interesting you bring that up on the Crazy Dental website. We have a feature called custom wish list. And what they can actually do is upon setup, they can set up, a, a product list for each doctor. So they don't have to remember, they can click on, you know, Dr. David's product list and they can just go there and it's one simple place where they can order the stuff specifically for Dr. David. So we can set up a wish list for the entire practice or we can set one up for individual doctors. Okay, is that under member benefits, products or our company? That's gonna be under the, I gotta refer you to Howie. That's under the reporting section, wish list. Yes, it's under, uh, well, if you, in the, when you go to the homepage, anywhere on the site, my list is at the top. My list. Oh, you got to log in first? Yeah. Or, or sign up? Um, so you got to, okay, so you go through the firewall first. Okay, well, that, that's yeah. pretty neat. Um, I still, um, you know, I um. <laughs> Oh my! I still think the most frustrating thing for me is just uh, just just the burrs. I I I I see more dentists in group practice stress out because someone will try to save money and say, okay, we're just going to have one burr block for restorative dentistry, and we're gonna we're gonna reduce it to just five burrs, and all the dentists will have to immediately go to drug rehab or therapy or crash. <laughs> I mean, uh, 
Um, and, and I and I and I get it. I mean, I'm a dentist. I mean, I I still need way too many burrs. Um, impression materials. Uh, like, give me an example. How do you save money on impression materials? Would you mainly be changing brands? They're all vinyl polysiloxane, yeah. right? Well, or polyether or wax silicone, but mostly BPS. Yeah. Um, y- you know, I mean, again, there. Honestly, from a pressure material standpoint, it depends. On bright, bite registration or something, you know, like alginate, I'd be less brand conscious. When it comes to the ones where I'm going to send them to the lab, if you're still using traditional material, I'd be a little bit more careful. Um, you don't want to mess with the, uh, you know, perfection. I'm sure all the dentists that are listening, you're all taking perfect impressions. So if it's working for you, then, you know, you probably don't want to skimp on the impression material right there. You know, you want to stick with the brand that you know. And, you know, make sure, making sure that you're getting the right properties so that you end up with a, with a restoration that you're happy with. Huh. That, that's interesting. Um, and what, um, what about burrs? Are you, uh, is burrs a big part of your business? It's a part. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> for me, that's a more boring part. Okay. What, what about gloves? See, see, when you were going through those, every time you said the next one, I knew the next one was going to be gloves. And because I, I, I to, <laughs> to me, maybe it just seems like that would be the biggest difference because you're always taking off your gloves and throwing them away and putting on more gloves. And there's nitrile gloves, there's latex gloves, there's all kinds of gloves. Um, so is, um, so, so talk gloves. Okay. So, I mean, the simple answer on gloves is the nitrile 300 packs is what you want to be using. Um, you're taking, like you said, Howard, you're taking them on, you're putting them off. You don't have to think about every time you put on a pair of gloves that I'm paying another 25 cents. Um, so if you go with, when what we see a lot of successful practices do is they'll keep the nitrile 300 packs. It's a thinner nitrile glove. So, you know, it has a pretty good feel. And then what they'll do is for specific procedures or specific doctors on specific procedures, they'll keep a more expensive glove. So like a neoprene glove is becoming more and more popular. A uh, neoprene, get, that's different than mm-hmm. nitrile? Correct. So you've got your traditional gloves were latex, okay? okay. So it was latex and then uh, nitrile is a synthetic material. And then neoprene is a different type of material that gives – uh, it feels more comfortable. It's more like a latex glove, um, but without the latex. You know, the downside of the neoprene is they're they're quite expensive. Um, it, it's an expensive material. But you know, ser- seriously, I mean, <laughs> if you're a practitioner and the gloves are on your hand, you want to feel comfortable first. And you know, if, I would urge everybody to try a neoprene glove. I would say within your practice, you should have a nitrile glove, a cheap nitrile glove, so that you don't. You know, for the assistants, when they're doing cleanup, they put on the gloves. When they're, you know, they're just walking to a patient on the hygiene side. Um, when it comes to, you know, specific for the practitioner, I would look at the neoprene glove and, and at least try it out. There's some, we've got, we get a lot of positive feedback on the neoprene. Huh. Um, so what, what is, so in your market, is allergies a big deal? I mean, do you have a lot of people that can't do latex because of allergies? It comes up a lot less than you think. I mean, the market has shifted away from latex. So I would say today, 70% of the glove business that we do is nitrile or synthetic. And is the nitrile the polyisoprene? Or is that now? Mm, I don't think so. No. Okay. Huh, that, that, that is interesting. Um, so um, so we talk birds, we talk a uh, uh, that is their, um, gosh, what, what am I not smart enough to ask you guys? What, what are you guys sitting there thinking? When's he going to ask us? <laughs> what am I missing? Uh, oh, are you doing drugs? Are you doing, um, uh, is, is pharmaceuticals a lot? Um, aspirin, Motrin, Tylenol, a lot of pharmaceuticals. Are they ordering a lot of that from you? Yeah. I mean, we definitely see, it seems like most practices want to have that on hand. Um, a lot of the antibiotics, just in case they have a patient who's to be taking them, you know, they kind of keep a jug on the, on the shelf and they might not use it all. And some of it might go bad, but it's really good. It's better than canceling a patient. So you want to definitely want to make sure you have that. Yeah. Um, are you seeing any, um, movements with the millennials? Everybody keeps telling me they're going to be all different, you know, and they, they, they all look like they have the same 10 fingers and 10 toes, but are they buying green? Are they concerned about plastic straws? Are you, are you smelling any of that change versus old guys like me? Um, or, or yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest change we see is on, like we talked about engagement. So I think they're less interested in having a sales rep. I think they're more interested in going online and ordering. Um, you know, quick, easy, um, you're seeing a lot more, 
you know, a lot, a lot more of the dental materials marketing is based around quick and easy. Yeah, and but you're not you're not seeing a big green movement. You're not at, you're not getting a lot of people saying, you know, is this made from solar or more environmental friendly or you're not seeing that big green movement? We haven't seen the transformational shift. Again, we don't do a lot of business in California. They would likely like you said there are different states of America. Right? So yeah. And you know, I, 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 I've seen that, that the, the greatest thing about being old, I mean, I'm 57, I got four grandkids, I got diabetes, erectile dysfunction. I mean, it's just, it's just great, but you, you, you get to see this still. And I, I remember when the ATM machine came out and me and dad thought, well, who the hell's going to do that when you could just walk in there and see Carol and get a sucker? Well, they sure as hell didn't want to go see Carol and get a free sucker. And they went to the ATM machine. And now I'm seeing that on my dental office, on my dental office website, todaysdental.com. They're they're scheduling their patients online. They they don't want to call during the day and be put on hold. So you're, you're, you're saying they want less human engagement and they just want to do it faster, easier, higher technical. Um, Gosh, I am. I don't know. uh, um, Pretty soon the hosts of podcasts will be robots. God, I hope any anything could be could do better than me at this thing. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is great. Um, you guys should get on Dental Town. We we have fifty forms, and one of them's dental supplies. Hell, if you just Google dental supplies, there's a gazillion questions, and they love it when the owner gets on there. I mean, that I mean they they just love it when. Uh, I mean, I mean, how cool is it when you, and when the CEO or somebody from the company comes on and answers their questions and. And that's why I called it Dental Town and not Dentist Town. I remember when I first started back in 99, Dennis come on and say, oh, this guy Larry came on and, and he's trying to sell something. I'm like, oh, wow, you mean you're a volunteer dentist in a public health clinic? Where do you volunteer at? Oh, I thought you <laughs> had a million dollar business. So um, I love, um, it's Dental Town, it's not Dentist Town. And for me personally, um, who did three molar root canals yesterday, if you took away about 50 dental companies, I, I would look like some, you know, third world dentist. Uh, uh, you know, I, was, the only way I look good is when these companies sell me the greatest technology in the world and they just make us all look so better. Uh, but man, I'll tell you what, it was, uh, I can't think of anything else to ask you. Um, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. Thank you for um, having us. Anybody, uh, anybody got any parting words they wanted to say? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to be more active on the Dental Town blogs, and uh, anybody who you know asks a question, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever I can to answer them because I, I think that we have a lot of knowledge, and um, I think we can really help. Uh, the, the dental industry is a key component of of the entire, you know, the the, the dental dealer industry is a key component of the entire dental industry. So, uh, you know, we want to be out there wherever we can. And l- let me tell you how you pay how, how you pay the most money for dental supplies, in my impression is when you buy some build-up material that takes two minutes to set up instead of one minute. I mean, I don't want to sit there for two flipping minutes. Right. Um, or why did you cancel our next patient? Oh, because we don't have this. Are you kidding me? That was a that was a $1,500 case because, and we don't do that. Um, I, I want fast set. They should have fast set and dental school set. And once you graduate dental school, say, I'm sorry, you graduated. We can no longer sell you <laughs> slow set. Um, so you want fast set. You don't want to um, reschedule. You want the human relationship. Um, I've changed dental supply companies three times in my 32 years, but it's because the same rep keeps changing or going around or whatever for implants uh, for, you know, when I'm buying uh, from an implant company. I don't care if it's implants direct or Strawman or whatever. I just want to know that if I have a surgery the next day and I need something and then the, yeah. So, um, it just, um, again, I just think this is a great industry, but guys, thank you so much. Um, well, I, 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 one thing I noticed with the millennials, I think there's less of a loyalty. You know, Howard, you just mentioned you stuck with the same rep throughout your 30 years today. It's, it's all about, you know, going online, whatever's easiest for me. And uh, I think that's 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 a point that can be uh, just brought up and mentioned, <clears throat> for better or for worse. Well, Jay, um, with eight kids, if you're ever um, can't take any more, you can send four of them to Uncle Howie in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, kids are great. Um, but uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate yeah. it. I hope you have a rocking great evening. You, you too. too. Make thank it a you. crazy right, day. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. <laughs> 
Thank you.